So I don't know about you, man, but whenever I get home from like a really long day, one of the first things I like to do to try and decompress is I'll toss some YouTube on the TV, and then I'll hop over to my laptop and pull up all the gaming news sites to see what news is new or see what games are coming out over the next few days. And so, of course, over the last few weeks, I've been getting pretty hyped for stuff like Hellblade 2, and I'll admit it, I am cautiously optimistic about X Defiant. But through one of these recent research sessions, I noticed something kind of strange, a brand new game that I completely flew under my radar called Animal Well had just come out a few days ago. But even more interestingly, this was a game that was published by one of the YouTube legends, Video Game Donkey. And look man, I'ma keep it real with you here. At first, I did not care. I didn't think much of it at all. I mean, if YouTuber music was anything to go off of, a YouTuber adjacent game was gonna be just as miserable, right? But nonetheless, I hopped over to Donkey's channel anyways, and I watched his latest video promoting the game, and I gotta say, the video really struck a chord with me. And not just because of like all the funny bits of the humor, but truly, once I figured out that this game was created by one guy, a man named Billy Basso, just kind of felt drawn to playing the game. Look, dude, I know this about myself. I am an empathetic sucker. I attach onto people and their story more than I do their product, and I love supporting people in their creative journey. And so for me, I was kind of just thinking, you know, sure, the game looks really simple, but it's 20 bucks. Let's support this guy and let's hop in and give it a go. And let me just say, thank God I did, because after playing Animal Well, I can confidently confirm for you that this is one of the most amazing and unique experiences that I've ever had the pleasure of playing through. But how in the world is that the case? How is it that this little pixelated indie game is able to to break the mold like that. But as well and on top of that, how is it that a YouTuber published game is so much better than a grand majority of the AAA bullcrap that's been shoveled our way recently? Well today my friend, let's try and figure it all out together and let's dive into this dank and dark animal filled abyss to try and get down to the truth about Animal Well. So listen, man, before we dive into this psychedelic well of puzzles and secrets, I got a few things I want to lay on the table just to give you a little bit of context. First off, I think I should give you a little bit of background as to what I want to do here in this video because, you know, self-admittedly titling the video The Truth About a Game leaves my intentions a little ambiguous. So for this video, what I really intend on doing is to not just sit here and walk through the entire experience. My goal is to not just sit here and break down every single mechanic piece by piece. No, instead, what I really want to do here today is to kind of just ramble on about the key aspects that stood out to me the most and made it such a special and unique experience. And then hopefully, by the end of the video and through all of my manic ramblings, we'll be able to find a bit of a through line to button it all up and tie it all together. But as well, before we really get the ball rolling here, I got one more little disclaimer I want to toss out there, and that's that for the footage in this video, I'm only going to be showing my first few hours of gameplay. And of course, I will not be showing any of the major puzzle stuff in this video, but however, I will be touching on some of like the basic structure and what your main goal is. And as well, I will be touching on a few of the basic mechanics here and there, but overall, I'm going to do as much as I reasonably can to keep a lot of this game under wraps. But still, even with all that being said, I'm still wanting to give you a little bit of like a tiny little micro spoiler warning anyways. Because you know, for this style of game, simply just showing gameplay footage at all or talking about every single mechanic would be kind of a bit of a spoiler in itself. Which if you haven't played this game, I know that might sound really bizarre. I mean, how in the world is talking about all the game's mechanics a spoiler? Well, here's the thing, right? In Animal Well, down to its core, it is a game all about experimentation, creativity, and discovery. And it is a game that to a fault requires you to figure everything out for yourself. I mean, just for example, starting out into the game, you blossom, a weak little blob, you're directionless, you have no instructions, no tutorial, no idea what's going on, but yet you have one inherent goal, venture forth, simply letting your intuition and game sense to guide your journey. And while at first, this world may come off really serene and pretty simple, but slowly, the further you progress in the game, it begins to open up a little bit more. You know, you'll stumble your way through a few of the simple puzzles here and there, you'll pick up a few new tools along the way, learn a new trick or two, until eventually you make your way to a new massive chamber of a room, one filled with these gigantic statues of creatures in the middle. And I mean, with a little bit of deductive reasoning, if you've played games like Super Metroid in the past, it becomes fairly obvious what needs to be done from here. These statues, they gotta be representing bosses of sorts, right? And once you peek back at the map for the game, you'll notice these four little flames just scattered across the vast, unexplored black void of a map. And from here, while you may have no idea how you, as a near defenseless blob, are gonna do it, but regardless, the game so simply, without speaking a word, gives you your objective. Somehow, you got gotta find a way to take all of these bosses down to activate these statues in some sort of fashion. And really quick, I just gotta say this, to do something like that, it takes some massive balls. To just throw all the players into your world and not give them any sort of explanation on what's going on and just trusting that they can figure it out themselves. 
that's something so unheard of nowadays. And while sure, that might all kind of come across and sound really minor, but that level of trusting that the player isn't a complete idiot and letting them figure it out themselves just two very important things. First and most obviously, this makes every single accomplishment, every single puzzle solved, and any new discovery feel so much more rewarding. Because like, dude, there's no NPCs dropping hints, there's no breadcrumbs leading you along your way, there is no laid out recipe for success. Instead, the only thing that got you there was your wits and your gamer brain plugging away to put all these abstract pieces of the puzzle together. And yeah, in some ways, that game design can kind of make this a little bit of a frustrating experience. You will no doubt have times where you're staring at a puzzle for minutes or even hours with no idea what's supposed to happen. But eventually, after staring at the puzzle for long enough, those neurons in your brain start to fire, everything starts to click, the puzzle pieces start to come together, and it all just starts to make sense. And while yes, obviously, that is such a satisfying feeling to crack that code of sorts, but simultaneously, and you know, just looking at other games in this genre, that really isn't anything too new. I mean, let's take an old school game like Super Metroid. You have puzzles in that game that can give you a similar sort of feeling where you're just staring at your screen completely stumped. But however, in Super Metroid, usually if you can't solve a puzzle, the reason is because you just don't have the tools necessary for the job yet. I mean, no matter how hard you try, no matter how perfect you are at all the movement tech, if you don't have the grapple hook, some areas are just going to be inaccessible. But the big difference with this game, with Animal Well, that's not always the case. It's not always a matter of just waiting till you progress in the game further to unlock more tools. I mean, don't get me wrong, that can come into play here and there, but honestly, nine times out of ten, all of these puzzles are solvable regardless. All you need to do is just completely rewire your brain and what you know about this game's mechanics to find some completely outside the box way of getting around everything. And listen, man, I know the way I'm explaining this is really vague, it's really cryptic, I'm trying to save as much of the discovery as I can for yourself, but just to give you one example with one of the tools you get really early on in the game, let's talk about the frisbee. Now at first, whenever you pick up the disc, it might come across completely useless, it kind of just seems like it's a dumb toy. But slowly, the further you progress into the game, its use has become more and more obvious. Like, oh hey, I could use this disc and toss it at hard to reach buttons. But as well, if you think back on your playthrough up into that point a bit more, if you remember seeing those dogs a few screens back, then you know you just put two and two together, dogs like frisbees, you toss the disc at him, and then boom, pacified. But take that concept and push it just one step further, experiment a bit more with it, and you realize like, oh hey, this disc will ricochet if I toss it back and forth. So just maybe, what would happen if I jumped on top of it? All just to figure out now that was once just a stupid little simple toy you thought nothing of was a whole new way to progress the map. And dude, those moments of revelation when you're just sitting back and you're like, geez, I've been playing this game for hours, I had that shit in my back pocket the entire time, and I had no idea what potential it had. You know, when you finally crack that code, when you figure out that new part of the gameplay, it can be a bit of a jaw-dropping experience. Because I mean, not only is it a brand new mechanic, but it completely shakes the core of what you believe to be possible in this game. And from that point forward, it makes you look at everything in this game's world differently. It forces you to experiment, it forces you to wonder. And trust me, dude, that feeling, those discoveries, they happen time and time again with essentially every single tool you pick up. Everything has its uses, and of course, its secret abilities. It's just all about thinking outside the box and noticing the small, tiny cues in the environment that the game is trying to give you. But look, man, I know I'm kind of bouncing around. I'm a little bit all over the place here, so let's get back to the point I was making earlier with what I was saying about Super Metroid, with like how if you don't have all the tools necessary for the puzzle, it's basically pointless to attempt. Because the thing here in Animal Well is that's usually not the case, which I just gotta say, what an ingenious way to design a game. Because you know, like on the surface level, like I was saying earlier, it's just super satisfying to figure out everything the game has in store for you because you have to do it all organically, you have to figure it all out for yourself. But simultaneously, and if you take it a little bit deeper, it also builds this feeling where like, sure, maybe you aren't upgrading all your gadgets via a skill tree or something like that, but still, nonetheless, there are new mechanics to be discovered, which sort of in itself makes that an upgrade to the gadget. But it's just even better here, it's better in Animal Well because you you aren't unlocking that new ability for your gadget via skill point, you're unlocking it through your brain if that makes sense. And generally speaking, without giving too much more about the game away, that's its hook right there. I mean, if you're just coming into this game or you're viewing it from the outside looking in, it seems like a cute little puzzle platformer and nothing more. But looks can be deceiving because my oh my, there is nothing simple about this game at all. Everything, hell, pretty much every room in this game is a puzzle that is just begging to be solved. And yeah, some of them are easy, some of them you'll figure out with deductive reasoning and trial and error. But some of them some of the puzzles, by the time you finish them, will have your jaw on the floor because the game drops some huge revelation bombshell on your head and now you have to completely rethink the way you're playing the game in its entirety from that point forward. But kind of to take a step back here for a second, with something I was saying just a second ago with how the game looks a little simple, I want to expand on that because that itself is a bit of an oversimplification. First off, sure, it's simple and that it's just pixels on a screen, but genuinely, and I kind of feel weird saying this considering nothing about the game is photorealistic, but Animal Well has some of the most beautiful graphics and some of the the most amazing art direction that I have ever laid eyes on. This game, dude, seriously.
seriously, is just such a work of art. Every single room is overflowing with vibes and aesthetic that if I had to put into words, I'd say it kind of feels a little cute and comfortable, but under the veil, something feels really off. It all feels a little uneasy and sort of trippy in a way. I mean, in regards to the comfortability side of it all, on the surface level, it looks like games we grew up on on the Super Nintendo, scan lines and all. But more so, its comfortability and a sense its familiarity is built because this game is so clearly and proudly wearing its influences on its sleeves. I mean, from the candles in almost every single room calling back to the old school Castlevania, or some rooms clearly having a bit of inspiration from games like Fez, but more than anything, and you know, I've brought it up already, but to me, this whole game's world, the whole art direction, it all just screams Metroid. I mean, it's almost uncanny at times. I mean, from just the structures in the background to the boss statues I brought up earlier, or even something like the noises that the bosses make, all of it to me personally, it just made me feel so at home. I mean, I've brought it up here and there in some of my videos in the past, but one of my earliest gamer memories was playing Super Metroid with my dad and my little brother. And you know, still to this very day, it's a game I gotta play through at least once a year. I mean, you see this, man? See that? Super Metroid played on the back wall, so you know, needless to say, with this game's world and Animal Well, it was easy to feel some nostalgia, and thus easily get immersed into it. But real quick, I don't want you to take that as me insinuating that Animal Well's art direction is just a rip-off of a bunch of other games. I mean, I said there was a sense of uneasy comfortability for a reason. And the reason being that while obviously this game is clearly inspired by a bunch of different things, but the way that they take those concepts and ideas and then twist them is what makes this game feel so unique. I mean, the best way I could explain it with like a bit of a comparison would be like, if a game like Super Metroid was your childhood bedroom, Animal Well feels like walking back into that bedroom like 30 years later with everything untouched, dropping a tab, and then watching the walls breathing and slowly melting down to the ground. Look, the point is, sure, the game is completely pixelated, nothing about it is hyper-realistic, but dude, for the love of God, do not be so foolish as to discount the beauty this game has in store. It's really something so special and so unique. But listen, I think that in a sense, you know, that feeling of when you look at the game, it kind of comes across like a simple little platformer, you know, that perceived simplicity, I think that's a big part of what makes this game so genius. Because you know, I've already said it once in the video, but everything about this game is deceptively simple. In almost every single facet, from the tools you get, to the world you walk in, to the puzzles you solve, at first all of it comes across like something you've already played, and something so familiar. And so because of that, I think that's what gets a lot of players in the door, and if you've ever liked games like this, very quickly you're gonna feel a sense of comfortability and nostalgia here. But the thing is, and more importantly, the deeper you get into the game, the deeper you dive into this creepy, beautiful, psychedelic, animal-filled well, the more you begin to realize nothing about this game is simple. And the reality of it is, is that everything is just hidden, there for you to uncover yourself, there for you to figure out on your own. And there is so much to discover, and not like in normal games where it's just like collectible dog tags on the ground or a bobblehead here and there. The discovery here in Animal Well typically is tied to the gameplay itself. And those discoveries, as you figure everything out, shake the fabric of the game. And as you continue to play, it becomes more and more crazy, more and more complex, and you begin to peel back the layers of that perceived simplicity to then slowly but surely reveal this underlying core of all the mysteries begging to be solved. And that itself is just such a hard thing to pull off in any game in general, but especially to make it all feel organic where no explanation is needed, no words even need to be spoken throughout the entire game. I just seriously don't even know how that's possible, but that's exactly what Animal Well does. But look, ultimately here man, if I didn't make it obvious enough already, I fucking love this game. I mean the last few days when I've been at school and I probably should have been focusing on more important things, but all I could think about is fucking Animal Well. Since I started playing the game, it has completely and utterly infested my brain, and I'm so happy that it did, because in a lot of ways it kind of brought me back to my childhood. Sure, it did it through the art direction and all that, but truthfully, it reminds me of those days when I was 8 years old playing Super Metroid in my bedroom, and somehow I'd figure out all the tiny little secrets and how I'd be able to beat a boss like Dragoon with some sneaky little trick. But as well, it also reminded me of all those amazingly satisfying feelings of solving crazy outside-the-box puzzles where you have to completely rewire the way you think in games like Portal. The point is, this game, Animal Well, it has everything I loved about those those games growing up, but it's just more, it's just better. This game genuinely blew my mind. And listen, if you take anything away from this video, and if you trust my opinion even 1%, please just do yourself the favor, buy the game, spend the 20 bucks, and give it a whirl. Because seriously, I'm saying this with no exaggeration in my voice, Animal Well is one of the most mesmerizing, unique, and challenging experiences that I've ever played. And honestly, I think it might be my top game of 2024 as of right now. It's seriously just such a gamer's game if you know what I'm saying. But now anyways man, with all that now said and done, that, my friends, is the truth about Animal Well.
Well, anyways, dude, that's the video. You know, thank you so much for watching, man. If you made it this far, seriously, just thank you for taking the time out of your day. And listen, I know I had to be really vague in this video. I kept it really cryptic. I wanted to keep this one really short and sweet because I really just wanted to save as much of this experience as I possibly could for you. But of course, now we're here at the end. So I got a couple questions for you. And first being, have you played the game? And if not, did I convince you to buy it here in this video? I'm really hoping so. And of course, if you have played the game, what is your take on Animal Well? I mean, this is really such a unique and crazy game. I think the experiences in it are going to vary quite a bit, so I really want to know what yours is. Because you know, man, at the end of the day, we're all just passionate gamers with different views and standpoints of our own, so drop a comment down below and let's talk about Animal Well. But real quick, man, before we go our separate ways, I got one more thing I want to throw out there. Don't click away just yet. And that's that from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you. I just finally hit 500 subscribers, and I know to a lot of people that's not that big of a deal, um, but to me, that is a fucking milestone. The point is, all I'm trying to say is thank you. I really, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate every single one of you for watching the video, and... Here's to a thousand subscribers, hopefully by the end of the year, right? But uh, yeah, man, deuces. Talk to you on the next one. Peace, man.